the first historical narrative, indeed, I produce concerning all things, O Theophilus, which Jesus began and continued both to be doing and to be teaching until the day in which he was taken up, having previously given a commandment to the apostles through the intermediate agency of the Holy Spirit, those apostles whom he had selected out for himself, to whom also he presented himself as one who was living after his suffering by many indubitable proofs through a period of forty days, being seen by them at successive intervals and speaking of the things concerning the kingdom of God. And being assembled together with them, he charged them not to go away from Jerusalem, but to be waiting for the promise of the Father, which you heard from me, because John indeed baptized by means of water, but as for you, by the agency of the Holy Spirit you will be baptized not many days from now. Then indeed, having been, <clears throat> then indeed, having assembled together, they went to asking him, saying, Lord, at this time are you restoring to its formal state the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, It is not yours to know the chronological events in the passing of time, nor the strategic epochal periods of time which the Father placed within the sphere of his own private authority. But you shall receive power of the kind which God has and exerts after the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be those who testify of what they have seen and experienced, my witnesses, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and to the end of the earth. And having said these things, while they were looking, he was taken up. And a cloud came under him in order to bear him up on high out of their sight. And while they were looking with fixed and protracted attention up to heaven as he was proceeding on his way, behold, also two men in brilliant white apparel had taken their position alongside of them and were standing there, who also said, Men, Galileans, why have you taken your stand looking up to heaven? This Jesus, he who was taken up from you into heaven, shall come in like manner as you saw him proceeding into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day journey. And when they entered the city, they went up to the upper room where they had taken up their residence for the ensuing time. Both Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, the son of Alphaeus, and Simon the zealot, and Judas, the brother of James, these all continued to give their persistent attention with absolute unanimity. That's not it. Unanimity. Unanimity to prayer, which was characterized by its def definiteness of purpose, together with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brethren. And in these days, Peter, having arisen in the midst of the brethren, said, and there was a group of persons gathered together, about 120. Men, brothers, it was a necessity in the nature of the case for the scripture to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit spoke on a previous occasion through David's mouth concerning Judas, the one who became guide to those who seized Jesus, for he was numbered among us and received his portion of this ministry. Now, this man acquired a piece of ground, the purchase price having its source in wages obtained by wrongdoing, and having fallen flat on his face, he cracked open at the waist with the crashing noise, and all his inner organs gushed out. And it became known to all the residents of Jerusalem, so that that piece of ground came to be called, in their own language, a keldemak, that is, a bloody piece of ground. For it stands written in the book of Psalms, Let his place of abode become deserted, and let there not be he who establishes his permanent residence in it, and his office let another person of a different character take. Therefore, it is a necessity in the nature of the case that of those men who have accompanied us during all the time the Lord Jesus went in and went out in our presence, beginning from the time of John's baptism, until the day when he was taken up from us, 
there be one of these appointed as one who bears testimony with us that he was a personal witness of his resurrection. And they nominated two, Joseph, the one called Barsabbas, who was surnamed Justice, and Matthias. And having prayed, they said, Lord, you who have an experiential knowledge of the hearts of all, Appoint the one of these two whom you selected out to receive the place of this ministry and apostleship, from which ministry and apostleship Judas fell away to proceed to his own private, unique place. And they handed out lots to be placed in an urn with respect to them, and the lot fell to Matthias, and he was numbered with the eleven apostles. And when the day of Pentecost was in process of being fulfilled, They were all together in the same place. And suddenly there came an echoing sound out of heaven as of a wind borne along violently. And it filled the whole house where they were sitting. And there appeared to them tongues that had the appearance of fire. These tongues being distributed among them. And one of these tongues took up a position upon each of them. And all were controlled by the Holy Spirit and began to be uttering words in languages different from their own native language and different from those spoken by the others, even as the Spirit kept giving them ability to speak forth, not in words of everyday speech, but in words belonging to dignified and elevated discourse. And there were in Jerusalem Jews who were in residence there, devout men who reverenced God from all nations of those under heaven. Now, When this sound was heard, the multitude came together and was at a loss to understand this, because they were hearing each one of them uttering words in his own dialect, and they were astounded to the point of being beside themselves, and went to wondering, saying, Look, to be sure, are not all of these who are speaking Galileans? And as for us, how can it be possible that we are hearing each one in our own private dialect in which we were born, Parthians and Medes and Elamites and those who had taken up residence in Mesopotamia and also in Judea and Cappadocia, in Pontus and Asia, also in Phrygia and Pamphylia, in Egypt and in the parts of Libya about Cyrene, also sojourners from Rome, both Jews and Gentile converts to Judaism. Cretes and Arabians, we are hearing them uttering in our own languages the mighty works of God. And they were all astounded to the point of being beside themselves, and were wholly at a loss what to think, saying one to another, What does this desire to be? But others of a different class, mocking, were saying, They have been filled brimful with sweet wine, with the result that they cannot hold any more. But Peter, having taken his stand with the eleven, raised his voice and said to them in words which belong to dignified and elevated discourse, Men of the Jewish race, and all those who are residents of Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and give ear to my words. For, as for you, these are not intoxicated as you suppose, for it is nine o'clock in the morning, But this is that which has been spoken through the intermediate agency of the prophet Joel and is on record. And it shall be in the last days, says God, that I will abundantly bestow my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons shall speak forth by divine inspiration, also your daughters. And your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream with dreams. Yes, and upon men and women who are the slaves of others and yet belong to me. In those days I will abundantly bestow my spirit, and they shall speak by divine inspiration. And I will bring forth miracles of a startling, amazement, awakening character in the heaven above, and miracles upon the earth whose purpose it is to attest to the workings and words of God, blood and fire and vaporous smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the day of the Lord comes, that great, conspicuous day. And it shall be that everyone, whoever, shall call upon the name of the Lord, shall be saved. Men, 
Israelites, hear these words at once. Jesus, the Nazarene, a man who has been demonstrated to you by God to be that which he claims to be. This demonstration taking the form of miracles that show the power of God and miracles that are startling, imposing, amazement awaking portent and miracles that have their that have for their purpose the attestation of the divine mission of the one who performs them, which miracles God performed through his intermediate agency in your midst, even as you yourselves know positively this one having been delivered up by the counsel of God, which in the council held by the Trinity had decided upon his destiny, even by the foreordination of God, which is that act fixing his destiny by wicked hands, you crucified and killed whom God raised up having loosed the pangs of death because it was not possible for him to be mastered by it. For David says concerning him, I was beholding the Lord always before my face because he is at my right hand in order that I might not be agitated and disturbed, thrown out of my sober and natural state of mind. On this account, my heart, <clears throat> excuse me, on this account, my heart was made glad and my tongue rejoiced exceedingly. Yes, moreover, also my flesh shall still pitch its tent upon hope there to rest because you will not leave my soul surviving in that place in the unseen world reserved for the human dead. Neither will you permit your Holy One to see corruption. You made known to me the course of thought, feeling, and action of life, that life, the eternal life given a believer in salvation. You will fill me with joy with your countenance. Men, brothers, I may speak to you with utter freedom of speech concerning our pro progenitor progenitor David that he came to his end in death and was entombed and his sepulcher oh boy I'm just on a roll sepulcher oh my goodness and his sepulchral memorial is among us even to this day therefore being a foreteller of future events and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him that from his offspring he would seat one upon his throne, he, having seen, before, seen this beforehand, spoke concerning the resurrection of the Christ, the Messiah, that neither was he left surviving in that place in the unseen world reserved for the human dead, nor did his flesh see corruption. This Jesus God raised up, whose witnesses we all are, bearing testimony to what we have seen and heard and learned concerning him. Therefore, by the right hand of God exalted, and having received from the presence of the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he bestowed this which you are both seeing and hearing. For David did not ascend into heaven, but he himself says, The Lord said to my Lord, Take your seat at my right hand until I make your enemies the footstool of your feet. Assuredly, therefore, let the whole house of Israel be knowing that God made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now, having heard this, they were stung to the heart with poignant sorrow, and they said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, What shall we do, men, brothers? And Peter said to them, have a change of mind, that change of mind being accompanied by abhorrence and of sorrow for your deed, and let each one of you be baptized upon the ground of your confession of belief in the sum total of all that Jesus Christ is in his glorious person, this baptismal testimony being in relation to the fact that your sins have been put away, and you shall receive the gratuitous gift of the Holy Spirit. For to you is the promise, and to your children, and to all who are at a distance, as many as the Lord our God shall with a divine summons call to himself. And with many other words he solemnly affirmed, and kept on exhorting them, saying, Be saved from this perverse generation. Then those who received his word with approval were immersed, and they were added to their number on that day about three thousand souls. And they were giving constant attention to the teaching of the apostles 
and to that which they held in common with them, and to the breaking of the bread, and to the gatherings where prayers to God were offered. And a reverential fear came upon every soul, and many miracles that excited amazement and attesting miracles were performed by the apostles. And all those who believed were gathered together as a unit, and were holding all things in joint participation, and were selling their houses and lands and other possessions, and kept on distributing them to all, according as anyone was having a need. And daily they continued to remain in the temple, in perfect unanimity, breaking bread at home, partaking of food together in gladness and simplicity of heart praising God and having the good will of the people. And the Lord kept on adding to them daily those who were being saved. Now Peter and John were going up into the temple at the hour of prayer, three o'clock in the afternoon. And a certain man whose lameness was due to prenatal cause was being carried, whom they were accustomed to place daily at the door of the temple, the gate which is called Beautiful, for the purpose of asking alms from those who were entering the temple, who, having seen Peter and John about to go into the temple, went to asking for a benefaction. And Peter looked at him with a piercing gaze, together with John, said, Look at once on us. And he began to fix his attention on them, expecting to receive something from them. Then Peter said, Silver and gold coins I do not have, but that which I have, this I give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ the Nazarene, start walking and keep on walking. And having firmly grasped his right hand, he raised him up. And instantly his feet and ankle bones were made strong. And leaping up, he stood and went to walking about. And he entered the temple with them, walking about, leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking about and praising God. And they recognized him as being the one who was customarily set at the beautiful gate of the temple for alms. And they were filled with amazement and were in a state of mental imbalance because of that which had happened to him. And while he was holding firmly to Peter and John, the entire crowd ran together to them in the covered colonnade, the one called Solomon's, completely flabbergasted. And Peter, having seen this, answered the people men israelites why are you marveling at this or why are you fixing your attention upon us as though by means of our own power or piety piety we have made him to be walking the god of abraham and isaac and jacob the god of our fathers glorified his servant jesus whom you indeed delivered up and denied before the face of pilate when it was that one's verdict to release him but as for you, you denied the Holy One and the Just One and demanded a man who was a murderer to be granted to you as a favor and killed the author of the life whom God raised out from among those who are dead, of whom, as for us, we are those who bear testimony to what we have seen and heard and learned concerning him. And upon the ground of our faith in his name, this man, whom you are attentively gazing at with a critical, discerning eye, and whom you positively identify as the person you know, his name made him strong. And the faith which is exercised through him gave to him this entire soundness in the sight of all of you. And now, brothers, I know positively that in ignorance you did it, even as also your chief men, but the things which God announced fully beforehand through the mouth of all the prophets that his Christ should suffer, he thus fulfilled. Therefore, repent at once, instantly changing your attitude and perform a right about face in order that your sins may be obliterated, in order that there may come epoch making periods of spiritual revival and refreshment from the presence of the Lord and in order that he may send off on a mission to you, Christ Jesus, who has been appointed. This appointment being in the interest of your well-being, 
whom it is a necessity in the nature of the case for heaven indeed to receive until times when all things will be restored to their pristine glory, things regarding which God spoke through the mouth of his holy prophets who lived in bygone times. Moses indeed said, A prophet from among your brethren, the Lord your God, shall raise up for you who is like me. Him you are to hear with reference to all things, whatever he may say to you. And it shall be that every soul which is of such a nature that he will not hear that prophet shall be utterly destroyed from among the people. And indeed, all the prophets since Samuel and those who followed one after another, as many as spoke, also announced these days. As for you. You are the sons of the prophets and of the covenant which God covenanted with your fathers, saying to Abraham, And by means of your race all the nations of the earth shall be become the recipients of benefits. To you first, God, having raised up his servant, sent him on a mission to confer benefits upon you in turning away each one of you from your pernicious deeds. And while they were speaking to the people, the the priests and the captain of the temple police and the Sadducees burst suddenly upon them and stood there in a hostile attitude, being greatly displeased because they were teaching the people and announcing in the case of Jesus the resurrection from among the dead. And they laid their hands upon them and placed them in custody where they would be guarded until the next day, for it was already evening. But many of those who heard the word believed. And the number of male individuals came to be about 5,000. And it came to pass on the next day that their rulers and elders and men learned in the sacred scriptures were gathered together in Jerusalem. Also Annas, the chief priest, and Caiaphas, and John, and Alexander, and as many as were relatives of the chief priest. And having stood them in their midst, they went to inquiring of them, by what sort of power or by what manner of name did you do this? Then Peter, being controlled by the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders, as for us, since we are being examined regarding a good deed done to an infirm man, by what means this man has been made whole, let it be known to you all and to all the people of Israel that by means of the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, whom, as for you, you crucified, whom God raised out from among those who are dead, by means of this one, this man stands in your presence, sound in body. This is the stone which, which was utterly despised and treated with contempt by you, the builders, which has become the cornerstone. And there does not exist in any other the salvation, for there is not even another name under heaven which has been given among men by means of which we can be saved, the need for this salvation being a necessity in the nature of the case. And viewing with the practiced eye the free and fearless confidence of Peter and John as manifested in their uninhabited and unreserved manner of speaking, and comprehending the fact that they were without formal education, and that they were not professional men, but laymen, they began to wonder and kept on wondering, and they began to recognize them as those who were with Jesus. And seeing the man who was standing with them, the one who had been healed, they kept on having not even one thing to say against it. But having ordered them to go off outside of the council, they went to conferring with one another, saying, What shall we do to these men? For that indeed a miracle which has for its purpose the attestation of the divine source of a message given by the one who performs the miracle, and one which is known, has been done through their agency, is known to all those who are residing in Jerusalem, and we are unable to deny it, but, in order that it may not be caused to spread them more among the people, let us with sternness threats forbid them to be speaking upon the basis of this name to even one of the people. 
And having called them, they commanded them not to be speaking at all, nor to be teaching upon the basis of the name of Jesus. But Peter and John, answering, said to them, Whether it is right in the sight of God to be yielding obedience to you rather than to God, you be the judges. For, as for us, we are not able not to be speaking the things which we saw and heard. And having sternly threatened them, in addition, they released them, finding not even one thing relative to the particular way in which they might punish them because of the people. For all glorified God for that which had taken place. For the man was more than forty years old upon whom this attesting miracle of healing had been wrought. And having been released, they went to their own associates and reported as many things to them as the chief priests and the elders had said. And they, having heard this, with one accord, raised their voice to God and said, O Lord, absolute in power, you who made the heaven and the earth and the sea and all things in them, who by the mouth of our father David, your servant, through the Holy Spirit said, Why did the Gentiles take on lofty airs and behave arrogantly, and the people devise futile things? The kings of the earth set themselves in array, and the rulers formed a coalition to the same end, that of antagonism against the Lord and against his anointed one. For of a truth, they're joined together in this city against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, with the Gentiles and with the people of Israel, to do as many things as your hand and counsel determined beforehand should come to pass. And as to the present circumstances, Lord, look upon their threatenings and grant at once to your bond slaves the ability to be speaking your word with all fearless confidence and freedom of speech while you stretch out your hand to heal. And grant that attesting miracles and miracles which arouse wonder may be done through the name of your holy servant Jesus. And having prayed, the place in which they were gathered was shaken, and they were all controlled by the Holy Spirit and went to speaking the word of God with fearless confidence and freedom of speech. And in the multitude of those who believed, there was one heart and soul, and not even one was saying that anything of the things he possessed was his private property, but they had all things in common. And with great power the apostles of the Lord were constantly giving their testimony of the resurrection, and the great grace was upon all of them, for there was no one among them who was in need, for as many as were possessors of lands or houses, selling them, kept on bringing the equivalent values of the things that were being sold and kept on placing them at the feet of the apostles. And distribution was constantly being made to each one according as he was having a need. And Joseph, who by the apostles was surnamed Bar Barnabas, which later name by interpretation means son of encouragement, a Levite of the land of Cyprus, possessing a field, having sold it, brought the money and placed it at the feet of the apostles. But a certain man named Ananias, with his wife Sapphira, sold a possession and set apart part of it for himself. His wife also knowing of this together with him, and having brought a certain part, he placed it at the feet of the apostles. And Peter said, Ananias, how is it that Satan exercised control over your heart with the result that you lied to the Holy Spirit and set apart for yourself a portion of the value of the land? While it remained, did it not remain your own? And having sold it, was it not under your authority? Why did you resolve upon this deed in your heart? You did not lie to men, but to God. And Ananias, having heard these words, having fallen down, expired. And there came a great fear upon all those who heard. And having arisen, the younger men covered him with the shroud, and having carried him out, buried him. Now there elapsed an interval 
of about three hours, and his wife, not knowing of that which had taken place, entered. And Peter answered her, Tell me at once whether you both sold the land for so much. And she said, Yes, for so much. And Peter said to her, Why is it that it was agreed by both of you craftily to make trial of and put to the proof the Lord's spirit to see whether he would condone or condemn this act? Behold, the feet of those who buried your husband are at the door and they shall carry you out. And she fell down immediately at his feet and expired. And the younger men, having entered, found her dead. And having covered her with the shroud, they buried her with her husband. And there came a great fear upon the whole assembly and upon all who heard these things. And by the hands of the apostles, attesting miracles and miracles which excite wonder and amazement, many of them were constantly being performed among the people. And they were in perfect unanimity, all of them, in Solomon's covered colonnade. And of the rest, not even one was daring to be entering into fellowship with them, but the people were esteeming them highly. And those believing on the Lord were the more constantly being added to the number, crowds, both of men and women, with the result that also into the streets they were carrying out those who were ill and placing them upon small couches for the sick and upon pallets in order that the shadow of Peter as he was coming, might overshadow some of them. Moreover, there kept on congregating also the multitude of those from the environs of Jerusalem, carrying sick ones and those who were being troubled by unclean spirits, such as these were being healed, all of them. Then, having arisen, the chief priests and all those with him, the sect which is of the Sadducees, were filled with jealousy. And they laid their hands upon the apostles and put them in the public prison. But an angel of the Lord during the night opened the doors of the prison, and having brought them out said, Be going on your way. And having taken a stand, be speaking in the temple to the people all the words of this life. And having heard that, they went about daybreak into the temple and began teaching. Now the chief priest and those with him having come, called together the Sanhedrin and all the council of elders of the sons of Israel, and they sent to the prison house to have them brought. But the officers, having come, did not find them in the guardhouse, and having returned, they made an announcement, saying, The prison house we found to have been shut, and it was locked, in a state of perfect security, and the guards standing at the doors, but having opened them, we found not one person inside. Now, when they heard these words, the captain of the temple guard and the chief priest continued to be entirely at a loss concerning them as to what might become of this. Then a certain one, having come, brought word to them, saying, Look, the men whom you put in the prison are in the temple, standing there and teaching the people.